Welcome to Big Picture Stats and Computer Analysis. Today we want to talk about the chi-square test of goodness of fit. And as we can see, this chi-square goodness of fit test is used to test whether a frequency distribution fits an expected distribution. And what we have, we're going to have observed frequencies and expected frequencies. Observed frequencies are frequencies we obtain from a study. Expected frequencies is a frequency that we expect to obtain. And we generally either get it using this formula here. The expected frequency is the number of items times the probability of obtaining those items. Now the probability can be viewed as a relative frequency for the distribution, for each item in the distribution. So let's look at an example of this. And again, our chi-square statistic will be obtained with this formula. So let's take a look. If we take a look, and also the degrees of freedom will be k minus 1, where k is the number of categories. It is not the number of pieces of data, it's the number of categories of data minus 1. So let's take a look. So we'll do an example first where we're assuming that the expected frequencies have a uniform distribution. Then we'll look at one that doesn't have a uniform distribution. So let's read this problem together and see if we can solve it with the chi-square goodness of fit test. A researcher claims that the number of different color candies in a bag of dark chocolate M&Ms is uniformly distributed. To test this claim, you randomly select the bag that contains 500 dark chocolate M&Ms. The results are shown in the table below at alpha equals 0.10 to te test the researcher's claim. So this data given to us in this table, these are observed frequencies. Now, they told us that the researcher wants to test the claim that the number of different candies in the bags of dark chocolate MLMs is uniformly distributed. Now, if they are uniformly distributed, you're assuming that each color has the same amount of MLMs. So you have the number of brown MLMs should equal the number of yellow MLMs which should equal the red, the blue, the orange, and the green. Now, if this bag contains 500 MLMs, and we have six colors here, we divide 500 by six, and each color's expected frequency then in the bag becomes 83.33333. Now, again, this doesn't have to be a whole number. This is just a theoretical value. And just take a look further. The null hypothesis is the expected distribution of different colored candies in the bag of dark chocolate MMs is uniform. The alternative is the distribution of different colored candies in the bag of dark chocolate MMs is not uniform. So for this test, the null hypothesis has to fall. It, it can have two statements. For the uniform distribution, it can be that the expected distribution of different colors in the bags is uniform. The other possibility is that the null hypothesis, the observed frequencies, are equal to the expected frequencies within the level of significance alpha. But we will talk about that when we do a non-uniform uh, expected frequency. For this one, since the expected frequency is uniform, this will be our null hypothesis. 
the alternative will be that the distribution of different colored candies in the bags of dark chocolate M&Ms is not uniform. Now, we proceed as follows. The degrees of freedom is K minus 1. So there were six colors, six categories of color. So degrees of freedom is 5. The level of significance alpha was 0.10. So we go to the table for the chi-square distribution. Point 10 alpha. Well, for point 10 alpha, we go to how many degrees of freedom was it? I forgot already. It was five. So five degrees of freedom, point 10 alpha. Our critical value is 9.236. That is the critical value of chi-square. So this is going to be a right tail test. So chi squared equaling 9.236. Let's say it's here. And the chi square test goodness of fit, the it will always be a right tail test. So this region is the region where we will reject the null hypothesis. And in this region, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now, our objective is to calculate the test statistic. So what we need to do, we need to calculate the chi-square statistic. We will make this table. These are the observed values that were given to us in this table. The expected frequencies, we figured out it was 83.33333. Those are the expected values. We take the difference, we square those differences, and then we divide the square of those differences by the expected values, which is essentially the values in this column. We obtain these values, we take the sum, our chi-square statistic is such, 3.016. This value of chi-square for our test statistic lands to the left of the shaded region. We will fail to reject the null hypothesis. And if we fail to reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis is our claim, that means there is not sufficient evidence at the at alpha equals 0.10 or the 10% level of significance to reject the claim. So the interpretation is here. There is not enough evidence at the 10% level of significance to reject the claim that the distribution of different colored candies in the bags of dark chocolate M&Ms is uniform. That is our conclusion if we do it by hand. All right, now let's take a look how this would look with SPSS. All right, so to do this problem in SPSS, we will take these observed frequencies and colors, put them in SPSS. So let me open SPSS, and I will enter them in this new data file. So what I will do for the colors, I'm going to enter them by numbers. I had six colors, so I'm just going to number them one through six, nothing fancy. So let me do that. And then what I need to do for each one of these, I will put its respective frequency. So the brown MLMs, there were 80 of them. The yellow ones, there were 95. The red ones, there were 88. The blue ones, there were 83. The orange ones, there were 76. And the green ones were 78. Okay. Now, let me go to variable view. So my colors, those are on the nominal level of measure. So let me put the colors. 
and I will add labels. So label one, it meant they were brown MLMs. The second color was yellow. So I'll put yellow. The third color was was red. So I'll say that it's red. The fourth color was blue. So I'll enter blue. The fifth color was the fifth color was orange. Well, that's her orange. The sixth color was green. So I will enter green. There we have it. So I got my colors. And the observed frequencies, we'll put these on scale level of measure. And let me call these observed frequencies. And let me go back to data view. And yeah, I had the A pushed already. That's why it's displaying them by color. Okay, if I push this, it'll go back to number, but they look better with the color. That way I know what I'm looking at. Okay, now what we need to do, we have to go to data, we go to weigh cases, we will weigh the observed frequency. Okay, so we took care of that. Let's minimize this. And we'll go to analyze. Now for this one, we will go to non-parametric tests. The chi-square goodness of fit test is an example of a parametric, non-parametric test. Go to legacy dialogues, chi-square. Test variable, the test variable is color. And here it says all categories equal. That is what you need if you are doing a chi-square test and your expected frequencies are, are uniformly distributed as they were in this problem. We had them uniformly distributed at 83.333 for each one. So for this, I will click OK. And let me maximize this. All right, there we go. It generated the table. Notice the observed frequencies are the same as stated in the problem. All my expected frequencies are 83.3. And my chi-square statistic, this is my test statistic, it is 3.016. So with this chi-square of 3.016 for my test statistic, let me just remind you, it basically is the same that they had here when they did it by hand. It's the same test statistic. We're in the unshaded region. We failed to reject the null hypothesis. And since we failed to reject the null hypothesis and the null hypothesis happened to be the claim, so we're failing to reject the claim. So that means there's not enough evidence at the 10 percent level of significance to reject the claim that the distribution of different colored candies and bags of dark chocolate M&Ms is uniform. So that's it.